10 underrated habits to get lean starting at 30% body fat. I've gone through multiple transformations myself, doing it over and over again. And each and every single time I've been able to improve my process and it's been 10 times easier each and every single time. Number one, because of the knowledge I've been able to gain. But now I also know what 10 underrated habits I need to instill each and every single time to achieve a similar transformation. I did the exact same with my client, Shannon. At 56 years old, she was even able to still enjoy her life. She's a busy professional running a company Company and still drinking two glasses of wine every now and then as she goes to her social events. This is my client Gary who just finished his 16 weeks working with me and in the past Gary has yo-yoed in terms of his dieting process and found himself in situations where he's lost the weight but he could never maintain the results. However, when working with me I instilled these 10 underrated habits and now Gary can confidently say he'll be able to maintain this physique year round. So if you watch this video from start to finish and you implement all 10 of these habits I can guarantee that you you will be able to get lean, especially if you're starting at 30% body fat. Let's not waste any time. Let's get into the underrated habit number one. Now, as you know, I'm a medical doctor and I love science. If it can be explained with math, then I'm all for it. And the first underrated habit I was able to implement with Gary and with all of my clients is the art of walking and walking a specific amount of steps. And let me explain to you why it is so important, even more so than your diet, that you at least establish walking is something that you've been able to do since you were literally between 10 and 18 months old but walking is the first step let me explain why it's so important here let's assume that this is one pound of fat and this in terms of energy if you wanted to get rid of this pound of fat you need to burn 3,500 calories that's the amount of energy it takes for this fat to disappear completely and that's where we get the equation that you need to be in a daily 500 calorie deficit because 3,500 divided by seven days in a week will give you 500 calories now here's where walking comes this is where your height and weight will come in but 10,000 steps for the average person will usually burn 500 calories. If you're taller and heavier, it may be a little less. Or if you're smaller and thinner, it may be a little bit more steps than you're going to need. But 10,000 steps is the number in general that you need to get to be able to burn 500 calories. And let's say you've changed nothing else and all you do is walk your 10,000 steps and you're eating the exact same food, you will lose weight. And this is exactly one of the main strategies I implemented with Gary and all my clients is to ensure that just through the walking alone, not even through the diet that we're burning one pound of fat. So if we do the mathematics, if we can burn 500 calories a day, 3,500 calories in a week, that is going to consequently give us about four pounds in a month that we can burn as a result of the walking. So my tips and recommendations is find every opportunity you can get to walk. If it's going to the grocery store, if it is going to go to see a park or a movie, wherever you find the opportunity, walk. And if you're very busy like myself, you can get a standing desk and use a walking pad that you can place right under your standing desk. And you'll see this is very normal in my coaching meetings that I have my clients walking during our meetings because we know that 10 minutes of walking will give you a thousand steps and if you're in one zoom meeting it's an easy way for 60 minutes to get 6,000 steps. I also have a walking pad in my living room and I find every opportunity to get my body to move so I can burn more calories. Doing this alone according to the mathematics you should be able to burn at least 24 pounds in a year if you just do 10,000 steps each and every single day and the beautiful thing of it is that it is so easy. Easy. On top of that, research has shown because walking is so low intensity, it will tap mainly into your fat stores as a source of energy. And as you increase the intensity of any exercise, your body will utilize an energy source that's readily available, in this case, glucose. And this is why usually high intensity interval training exercises will tap into your glycogen source. So you will see and notice that if you just start walking more, let's say you change nothing, your clothes start fitting better, your pants start feeling better, your pants start feeling tighter, and you maybe even need a new walk wardrobe. I promise you this tip number one, I'm putting it in the beginning because I want to be known as that guy who told you to get 10,000 steps. You finally decided to do it in 2024 and now you have an amazing physique. Without further ado, let's move on into underrated tip number two. Tip number two is intermittent fast. Now we understand to be able to lose weight, you need to be in a caloric deficit. However, because this is an underrated tip, we want to have the easiest way that we can lose this weight without it being any effort. And the easiest way to do that is what we call time restricted feeding and you may know it as intermittent fasting. Look at these two cups. Cup number one is representation of you having your breakfast, lunch, your dinner and having a snack. Because you're eating throughout the entire day, the likelihood that you eat more calories is so much higher. However, and introducing cup number two, this cup represents you skipping lunch and only being able to eat your lunch, dinner and a snack. You consequently will eat less calories because you've essentially skipped one meal entirely and your stomach can only take so much food in that day. So intermittent 
intermittent fasting is the easiest way that you can put yourself in a caloric deficit. Not only that, the main magic behind intermittent fasting is that it's an easy way to understand, hey, this is when I should eat and this is when I shouldn't. You may or may not know that breakfast actually stands for break fast. And it was really created as a marketing tactic to get people to start buying foods in the morning for them to eat. And in reality, this is a practice I highly recommend. You may be different. Everyone isn't the same, but I highly recommend is doing intermittent fasting. It makes following a plan a lot easier. And in reality for me and for all the people I work with, and again, I do have clients who have to eat breakfast, but most of the people, I want to say 80%. And in my own experience, I have to intermittent fast to get the result I want. Not only that, but when I'm intermittent fasting, because I've shortened the window, window, I get to eat a lot more different foods because I have so many calories allocated to my entire dieting. So I can eat my burger, I can eat fries, I can eat the pasta, the rice, all the foods that I do enjoy because I've just made the simple decision of taking my calories that I'd usually eat in breakfast and allocating that to my lunch and dinner, which gives me so much options. And the easy way to do it is think of it like a credit card. You have $2,000 to spend, which is 2000 calories. Do you want to spend it on a breakfast, a lunch, a dinner and a snack? Or would you rather get two to three? really nice things that you enjoy and that you can do consistently all you need to do is really maybe just have a black coffee and in my experience outside of those calories allowing you to get lean what is also really beneficial is all my clients including myself has seen this spike in energy levels in the morning because you're not feeling tired or sluggish from eating the food and as you can imagine your body has to put resources and energy towards digesting breakfast but when all of that is just focusing on on your work you're not thinking about food and you're really able to go through your day, I found my mornings to be so much more productive without having to have breakfast in there. And I've been doing this for nearly a decade. I've tried both. I highly recommend that you try this underrated tip and you'll just notice from intermittent fasting alone that you'll have much healthier eating habits. You'll consequently consume less calories. But again, for weight loss, it is calories in versus calories out. But without even having to think about it or weigh the food or track it, eating in a smaller window will consequently make you eat less calories overall. So this is the second tip that I highly recommend that you follow and doing so consistently. You don't necessarily have to do 16, 8 or 24. You can start off with 12, 12 and then work your way up to 10, 14 and then to 16, 8. And myself, when I really get to low calories, when I'm in competition prep, I can go as far as fasting for 20 hours and eating in a four hour window period. This time I'm usually eating less calories and my stomach can take the digestive stress. But that is tip number two. Let's move on into the underrated tip number three. Tip number three is going to have a profound effect, not only on your ability to lose fat, also on your ability to build muscle. Let me explain. And that tip is to eat more protein, 40 to 60 grams a meal. And if you want to be specific, you can even say 50 grams a meal. Let me explain. For you to figure out how much protein you really need to be eating, you can do this. You can give yourself one gram of protein per pound of body weight, or you can give yourself one gram of protein per centimeter of height. Or if you want to take it another step, you can take the average average of both. And then that should be the amount of protein that you're eating. For the sake of this video, let's say you're 200 pounds, and you need to eat 200 grams of protein. What this protein will do is that it's going to make sure that you're giving your body the building blocks, right? When you're training, you're damaging the muscle tissue and you're creating micro tears in your muscle. And when you eat protein, it's able to repair it and create a new layer on top of this. And if you do it for a month, two months, six months, a year, all of a sudden you've created enough layers to add muscle. And on top of that, what's beautiful about adding muscle is that this muscle requires energy. So consequently, you'll need to eat more calories because this is active tissue that needs to live. So I always look at building muscle as a long term investment. So the way you eat more protein, the more you're doing it as a long term investment to give you the building blocks to build muscle. Not only that, the other benefits from eating more protein is that protein has an amazing effect of making you feel full. See what happens when you eat a chicken breast or see what happens when you eat steak. I've never heard someone say, hey, Dr. Mike, I got fat off of eating chicken breast and steak or from eating egg whites because those foods are extremely satiating. They will make you feel full and the fuller you feel throughout the day, the less calories you'll eat consequently and the more fat that you will lose. This way, you're also making sure that you're maintaining your muscle mass as you're in a caloric deficit and you're also eating less calories because you're eating more protein. Now, it's very easy to hit 200 grams of protein. And remember this, six ounces of lean ground beef will give you 50 grams of protein. Six 
ounces of lean chicken breast will give you 50 grams of protein. And the same applies for egg whites. And all you need to do is divide that by how many meals you want in the day. Let's say, for example, you want to hit 200 grams of protein and you're going to have four meals. Then you need to make sure in each and every single meal you're eating 50 grams, 50 grams for breakfast. And what you can have is a protein oats, for example, or you can have egg whites on toast, for example, or you can have Greek yogurt mixing in with protein. There's so many options. And this is where the dieting building comes in. For lunch, you can have lean ground beef and rice. For dinner, you can have a chicken breast and pasta or a chicken breast with rice, whatever combination you want. Even if you want to take it another step further, if you drank a protein shake with each and every single meal you'd have, let's say you want the easiest way and the most underrated way. And each and every single meal you had, you made the rule that you'll have a protein shake. See what massive difference that has in your physique because consequently you're hitting your protein intake and also you're going to feel so much fuller. So the big advice here with tip number three is eat more protein. And finally, eating more protein will also boost your metabolism. Why? When you eat more protein, it takes more energy for your body to break down that protein and to digest it compared to the carbohydrates and to the fats. And this is the fancy word we use for it called the thermic effect of food. So every time you have more protein, the more calories your body is burning, breaking down that protein. So the only downside to eating more protein is if you have a kidney condition. However, if you are healthy, you have no liver issues, no kidney issues, they are more than fine to eat at least one gram of protein per pound of body weight. And I'll give you the secret. With a lot of the clients that I work with, I sometimes like taking it a step further and I may even give them as far as 1.3 grams of protein per pound of body weight, especially if they don't have any issues because this circumvents any hunger that they feel. They get to eat more chicken breast, they get to eat more steak. Most people like more meats. Maybe they want to eat a little bit more fish and they've only ever seen a positive outcome. I have gone as high as 1.3 grams of protein per pound of body weight and I've never seen any issues. Tip number three is eat more protein. Let's move on into tip number four. This is a big one and may be controversial, but once a week, I want you to have a cheat meal. What I've seen psychologically with people is as human beings, we really like on and off. We don't like something in the middle. So what happens is you'll go through a month, you'll be very motivated and you'll say, I'm not going to have any cake. I'm not going to have any burgers or pizza. I'm going to have nothing. And what happens is as time passes, you build this craving towards a particular food. And then one day your willpower breaks and you have a bad day on your diet and then you just binge on a particular food, usually having an entire cheat day. And you find yourself in this constant path of I'm going to work really hard and then I'm going to have a cheat meal. And I've seen this cycle happen too often. However, if you're following all the advice I've given you earlier, research has shown that if you have a refeed meal or one cheat meal each and every single week, once a week, you'll actually have better results. It has shown it's compared to groups. One group had no refeed meal slash cheat meal. And the second group had a refeed meal. The second group actually managed to maintain and retain more muscle tissue. Why? Because when they had a refeed meal, they felt more energetic the following day. So for example, my clients will have their refeed meal on a Sunday and they'll feel more energetic on a Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So what happens on those days, they actually train harder, they get more steps, and also they've gotten the psychological break from a monotonous diet. And what happens is they follow the plan so much more because they know, hey, on Sunday, I get to have this meal as a reward for my hard work. So it also allows allows the plan to be sustainable long term versus this. Hey, you can never have this. It's almost like the idea of that. Hey, never press this red button. At some point, all you're going to want to do is smash that red button. So having one cheat meal, not a cheat day. When I say cheat meal, I don't mean have a burger, have fries, have a milkshake and then wait for an hour and then have some cookies after that. I mean, have one meal. Maybe it's a burger with small fries and make that your rule consistently, but follow a plan throughout the week that will serve you better instead of having having an entire cheat day or putting yourself in a situation where you decide I'm not going to have an entire cheat day. I've seen this happen with men's physique competitors because they decide they're going to go through a prep without any cheat meals at all. They usually tend to regain a lot of the weight post show because their body and themselves have this high craving for all these foods because they've told themselves for the last four to six months not to eat anything. Psychologically, it's a lot easier to go through an entire life transformation, having that cheat meal instead of saying I'm not going to do it ever again because the likelihood is so little. So in terms of physical and mental benefits, I recommend doing a cheat meal and be sensible about the cheat meal you have. Some of my clients, I tell them, hey, don't go for a large pizza, go for a small pizza, be sensible. And then you can do the small pizza once a week. And they said, thank you for that, Dr. Mike, because 
it allowed it to be sustainable. I get to share a meal with my family. And now this becomes more of a lifestyle. You're able to accept it so much more. But let's move on into tip number cinco. Number five, people tend to want to lose fat fast and they want to do it alone. But you tend to gain the weight back when you go fast. But if you want to go far, go together. And this is where I want to bring up accountability. As human beings, we work so much better in a larger ecosystem because it's very beautiful watching us work together in unison. And I highly recommend utilizing the same approach with your fat loss. If you can find a group of friends, family members who can hold each other accountable, it is one of the most powerful tools you can hold to be able to reach a certain destination. Because whenever you find yourself in a situation that you want to buckle on your diet, you want to go out drinking, or you want to have a cheat day, you'll think about all the other people who are also depending on you or that you're working on a particular goal together and you will see that you'll do so much better. I'll give you an example. I work so much harder now in my company, not because of the goals that I want to hit, but because of everyone else that's surrounded and belongs to that company because I want to see success for them as well. And this is why I highly recommend a create a group with your friends, maybe put money into that group and say, hey, we're all going to put $100 and the person who loses the most weight and four months from now get that you watch what amazing results you see. Another thing you can do is just decide between you and your family members and say, hey, let's all lose weight together, create a group, make a pact and agree and see how much better the results will be because you'll think about them every time you consider maybe wavering off of the diet. And yes, the more paid version of what I'm speaking about is finding coaching. This is why athletes like LeBron James or Cristiano Ronaldo have coaches, not because they're, they're already the best athletes, but number one, having someone who can give you an objective opinion and someone who wants the best for you will always be able to elevate you. They'll be able to pick you up when you fall down. So I highly recommend being held accountable by somebody. If it's your family members, it's your friends, or if you want to take it a step further, pay for coaching. I will give you an example. I have always worked with a coach, not because I don't have the knowledge, but because I know that if I listen to someone I respect and I need to check in with them once a week, the likelihood that I will follow the process is so much better. And I utilize this tactic to my own advantage. So I don't just talk the talk, I walk the walk. And only this year did I learn why not do the same in my life with business or with mentorship or even life decisions. I've had many different coaches and now I know if I really want to get to a certain destination, find someone who's done it before to get me to that result. And if you're in that point, you are a busy professional. Those are the people that I work with, guys who have already succeeded in other parts of their life because they understand what hard work is like and they just haven't been able to take care of themselves. You finally want to get a six pack. You want a science-based guaranteed format that will get you there. You want not to stress about this anymore, about what to eat, how to treat, all of that. Then I highly recommend you fill out the application in the description below to be able to work with me. Myself and my team will jump on the call and see if we're a good fit, really see what's going on. We may even just give you some advice and that might be the best. But if we feel that, hey, we can definitely help you, we'll tell you about what we do. Getting some sort of accountability is an amazing feat. And what I do, I put it on social media. I put it on YouTube. Hey, I'm competing February 4th. I put it on Instagram because I know that I never want to let you guys down. So that's a recommendation, even utilizing your social media to your advantage. But that's tip number five. Tell a friend it is an extremely powerful tool that you should take advantage of. And that's why I've put it in my underrated list. Let's move on into tip number six. Tip number six is sleep. I highly recommend you sleep more. And the way you need to think of sleep is more so as the oil to your machine. If you have a Ferrari, however, if the Ferrari and the engine has no oil at all, the car, A, will function suboptimally, or B, the car will break down. And that's what's happening to most of you guys. You're not sleeping enough. There's not enough oil in your engine. And at the end of the weekend, you're craving for high satiety foods. You want a donut, you want to go out to drink, or you're super tired and you're looking for serotonin in other places and it's so much harder follow a diet as a result of a lack of sleep sleep is the dark horse to so many people's fat loss i've had clients who are in decent shape maybe at 15 percent on six hours of sleep and they couldn't get past that point when i gave them eight hours it gave their body more time to recover more time to burn more calories fixing all the mistakes you've made and as a result it's been able to allow them to improve their levels of testosterone production and go from 15 percent to 10 percent because they've now oiled their 
machines so much more. So if you're a fan of Call of Duty or FIFA or any sport, you're playing it on hard mode, not sleeping enough. So yes, can you see results sleeping six hours? Yes, and I went through that through medical school. However, I had to do so much more cardio and cut my calories so much more and had to stay disciplined so much more through that period because I was sleeping so little. However, when I was able to shift that sleep pattern from six hours to seven hours, I could tell the difference. I was less hungry. I didn't feel like going out to eat at McDonald's or have Pizza Hut or have a donut. And when I was sleeping eight hours, I would notice that my weight would just keep on flying off if I was in a caloric deficit because my body was working for me. My metabolism was optimized. My hormonal profile was amazing. So if you want to be able to do the most easiest thing for yourself is sleep more. I promise you I've had clients without changing their diet, without changing anything. All I did was like, hey, for the first week, you're so busy. The only thing I want you to do is sleep more. What happened was as a result, they were eating better foods because they just felt better. They felt healthier. They were more energetic. You know, when you're not sleeping enough, you feel very tired. But when you're sleeping more, you're like, you know what? I want to take a walk. I want to go here. They train better. And as a result, a week, two weeks passed and the weight was flying off because they were making better decisions as a result of giving their body enough time to recover. And it's the same way as if you think of a Tesla, if you spend more time charging your Tesla, it's going to be able to go further. And the same applies with sleep. You cannot understate how much sleep has an effect. And I'll say this to you guys. If you're in your teens, you can maybe get away with sleeping less because your testosterone is producing at such a high level. Your body is growing. So you're burning calories already. But once you get into the 25s, 28s, 30s, 40s, 50s, it becomes so much harder because you're not in a growth stage anymore and you need to be a lot more detail orientated. And the first thing you can do is just deciding to go to bed earlier or decide to wake up a little later. Such a simple decision that has a profound effect. And I'll say this for all the, hey, I need to work hard. I'm so busy. I work with some of the busiest people. I am one of the busiest people I know. And what I've realized is that when I sleep seven to eight hours, I'm more productive in my time, which allows me to complete more things. And on top of that, I have better ideas. I'm in a better mood and I am better for everyone around me. And it's allowed me to see more success and it allows me to be a 2.0 version of myself. I highly recommend you give sleeping eight hours, seven to eight hours ago so that you can see what the 2.0 version of yourself looks like. And the best way I can describe it is like you get to take the limitless pill and see what version of yourself comes out on the other side, sleeping eight hours. I even say give yourself a week trying it and see what difference it makes. Let's move on into the next tip. The next tip is change your environment. And this is something I learned and I know what a lot of students and when you're living with your family or you're living with other people who aren't after your same goal, it becomes a lot more difficult. If you have cookies on your kitchen countertop, you open your fridge, there's leftover pizza, you're drinking non-zero calorie drinks and your environment isn't suited for your goal to lose weight, the likelihood that you mess up is so much higher. It is much harder to resist than just to avoid it completely. So I highly recommend, and this is something I always do whenever I go through a competition prep, I get rid of the candy bars, the chocolates, the cookies, I get rid of it all. If you don't want to have to throw it in the bin, put it in a location for yourself that's unfavorable, that's not easy. Put it at a very tall kitchen countertop. And research has shown that when you make it difficult to reach foods that aren't to your benefit, it results in a lot better results for you because you end up eating less cookies because it's so difficult or you end up eating less cake or messing up on your diet as a result. So if you have anything in your environment that isn't supporting your cause, let's say, for example, you're an alcoholic and you keep wine and vodka in your fridge, you're not making your situation any easier. It's much better to not keep any alcohol at home. And it starts when you're in the grocery store, when you're buying the foods that you need, just don't buy any of the things that won't benefit you at all. And if you want to take it a step further, which is what I do with my clients, we actually end up picking healthy alternatives, right? So instead of a Snickers bar, we're getting Quest bars. Instead of getting the normal ketchup, we're getting the reduced sugar ketchup. Instead of going to buy a burger, maybe buy ingredients so you can make a burger for yourself at home. But changing your environment has the most profound effect on your ability to see success. And this doesn't just apply to your ability to want to lose fat and get lean, but this applies into everything in your life. If you want 
want to study more, you need to create that environment. And this is more so specifically talked about in the book by James Clear. So if you ever come to my home or you've seen my home, everything is optimized for me to succeed. I have a treadmill near my desk. I have a treadmill near my TV, which I don't mind spending time on. I have a treadmill here behind my desk. Any scenario where I can move more, eat healthier, I will always make that decision. Let's move on into the next tip. In terms of training routines, we understand to be able to build muscle, we need to do resistance training. Research has shown that individuals who resistance train more see better results because they're a lot more consistent. And this is the same thing I've seen with my clients. When I'm able to get them to train in the morning, they go a lot more consistently and they feel a lot better throughout the day. There's no scientific explanation behind why this is, but if I could say in my own experience, when I've decided to train in the morning, and this is one of the things I started doing waking up at 5 a.m., I was more productive in my day. I felt a lot more energetic and I was much happier from training in the morning because I felt like I accomplished something. And I personally want to say it's probably as a result of the release of endorphins from training in the morning. So if you're looking for a good way to start your day off happy in a good way consistently, I highly recommend maybe making a slight shift, waking up early and going to train. So I highly recommend number one, resistance training as a habit because you want to build muscle long term. So you have that desired physique and you boost your metabolism. There's just so many more benefits, but not only just resistance training, but doing it in the morning will give you a much better productive day throughout. And if you find yourself struggling, the first week will be a challenge, but you'll just notice that it's a good habit to have and it will become seamless. So I highly recommend training in the morning and then rather getting some rest in the evening and going to bed sooner. This will be so much better for you overall and I've been doing this for nearly a decade and now three years with Sculpt by Science and with everybody I've ever made that recommendation to they've never said I don't regret it again this isn't a one-size-fits-all scenario but if you can find the opportunity do make that change let's go on into the next tip number nine drink more water. As you go throughout your entire day, you may feel signals of hunger, but you'll be surprised that a lot of those hunger signals you're feeling is actually a signal for thirst and dehydration. So overall, what I recommend is you want to drink about half of your body weight in ounces. So if you're 200 pounds, you want a minimum of 100 ounces worth of water. If you're 250 pounds, the same applies. But in general, I always recommend to drink anywhere between 0.8 to 1.2 gallons of water each and every single day. Number one, it should help you in terms of your metabolism. If you're drinking cold water, your body needs to warm that water up and it will boost your metabolism. Research has shown that it may not play a bigger role, but what it does help with, number one, keep you hydrated. And number two, you're less likely to consume so much more calories because you're spending a lot of the time drinking more water and your stomach will feel fuller. It's amazing for your skin. So if you're someone who doesn't have amazing skin, hydrating and having water in your system is so much better for your skin and it has so many more benefits that I could make an entire video on but drink more water again half of your body weight in ounces and it's an easy way to calculate and I would say that's on the minimum end but usually I'm sure you've heard a gallon a day let's move on to the final tip number 10 is don't give up with people who've wanted to work with Sculpt by Science I've heard so many stories and the main issue I see with so many people is that they give up and when I say that I'm talking about consistency as well if you're not in great shape if you're at 30 percent body fat, it took you some time to get there. And I don't mean that you went from 10% to 30% in one month. It took you two months, three months, four months. It maybe even took you six years or you've been that way your whole life. Making a change in terms of getting in shape will take the same amount of time. It can be shorter if you know what you're doing, but be patient with your body. But myself, I've seen too many people give up way too soon or they've just not given their body enough time. So be patient with yourself and just be consistent. That is number 10. Do not give up. I see too many people do that. I, I was speaking to a gentleman and I'm not going to mention his name, but I was speaking to him and he said, hey, Dr. Mike, I've been overweight my entire life. I've taken testosterone. I've taken a Zempic. I've taken semi-glutide. I've done calorie counting. I've done CrossFit. I've done all these things and I've not been, I, I lose about 20 pounds, but I'm still overweight. I've tried any, everything and I'm ready to give up. And I asked him, hey, how long have you been trying to eat low calories? right how long have you been trying to lose weight and he says hey for about three to four years now where I've really been trying and I said hey have you ever tried to give your body a break and actually eat at maintenance and his eyes lit up you can't try and lose weight all the time and if you maybe gave his body a chance and just ate at maintenance you didn't even have to be in a surplus ate at maintenance for six months and then from there decreases calories he would have gotten his result 
the point I want to make is all the answers you seek in your life from diet and training to business to lifestyle is all out there. You just need to be patient enough to reach there. Even right now, I have things that I can be frustrated on, but as long as I know I'm taking one step forward, even if it's a small one each and every single day, I am happy. But I'll leave the video here. If you did enjoy this kind of content, leave the video with a gentle thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate it. If you're new, subscribe and let me know in the comments. Do any of these 10 tips relate to you? And if you want more of this type of content, let me know in the comments as well. But I'll leave it here. Cheers.